Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Welcome to my rooftop on this very windy day in Torre Vieja, Spain. I wanted to walk the beach, but it's too windy for the sound, so I hope the sound is still good on this rooftop over here. In today's amazing video, guys, yes, it's an amazing video because I have five amazing Bitcoin charts. I have a trading tip. I have some travel advice. Yes, of course, Bitcoin travel advice. I'm talking about the news. Yes, of course, huge news. I'm answering one of the questions yes of course a very serious question yes and it will end the video with some inspirational quote guys here from my beautiful rooftop with this amazing view the sun is rising over there i can't film that direction because you will be blinded but uh, let's jump into the charts to see exactly what is happening we did bounce at 61k we are back at 64k what is bitcoin's next play bam The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. Look how amazingly we found support in that red area that was on the chart already for a couple of days, weeks, that I told you this is the massive support area. If we break these support areas around 67K, we could fall to that area and we did fall to that area. At the moment, a, a buying signal, the candle closing above the yellow stepping line. We have the white line above the blue line. The white line is at a beautiful low level of 36, which means there's a lot of upward potential possible, huh? even to 70 levels, for example. We can see the green starting, the green on top. This is a beautiful, valid buying signal with a triple confirmation, quadruple confirmation. Yeah, so I would have bought this signal if I would have been awake at this moment at 3 or 3 a.m. Um, I could still enter the signal, but then still the profit would be a little bit less. Uh, target should be 65, 66,000 US dollar. The top of this Bollinger Band, there's also some resistance. If we break that, of course, you can then expect the next target over out around 70K again. But still a beautiful trade if you took it congrats with taking that trade now um, then we will zoom out a little bit to the day chart on the day chart we can see that we are breaking that green line to double click it you can see on inputs it's the length is a 50 daily moving average uh, the blue line over here is the 12 weekly moving average i took the indicator time frame on the week and the 12 because that's always in history been a very uh, su massive support level as well and then of course the 200 daily moving average is this red line now we can see that yes we almost wicked to that blue line the 12 weekly moving average if you look back in history again just let's do what we did yesterday we can see that that green line that i talked about yesterday over here and that blue line are both close to each other and both acting as support or resistance line so that has been in history also a line to keep an eye on now so if we fall through that green line then you need to keep an eye on the next most important line and the next most important line would be that blue line which is now around 78k now that is the maximum dip i'm expecting i don't think we will go far below that my hottest pain i think even the dip was now already there that was a 16 percent dip i believe something like that that's a beautiful dip again for people to add more to the portfolio uh, the macd will be bottoming out will be turning around the rsi already did almost bottom out around the dollar line will be turning around this is on the daily chart so we will see more bullish times don't expect a bull market top in 2024 i've been telling you every time again again and again 2025 so there will be a lot of sideways moments maybe for 30 days maybe for 60 days like two months of sideways movements from 60 to 70 gave before we could break out to higher levels and in summer we all know there is a little bit less trading happening so maybe this summer will be a very boring summer but it will make it possible for you to enjoy that summer <clears throat> now if we zoom out to the weekly very old chart that I've been using to guide you through the whole bear market. I hope you all remember that when I called the bottom over here, I told you guys that is the bottom. You're not going to go lower than that 60,000 US dollar. Um, hopefully you bought all that bottom. And then I kept guiding you. Let's, and I kept telling you guys, we will make a new high and then a higher low. We did that. And again, we made a new high high and again, a higher low. And every time during these higher lows, I told you to buy. I told you buy this dip, buy the dip. There will be a new higher high and again, a higher low, buy the dip. And now again, there was a new higher high. There is a new higher low being created at the moment by these dips. Green line, 50 weekly moving average. 
the red line is a 200 weekly moving average and the purple line is a 300 weekly moving average uh, not important yet they will become important during the bear market guys so now keep an eye on buying that higher low we can see the rsi on the bottom here the weekly also going down into that dotted line again so it could mean yes there's a little bit more correction possible uh, that will be at higher low buy that higher low buy that dip because after that we will go and create a new higher high again now some more very interesting charts are over here this one is showing you the next target for bitcoin and why is it the next target also these charts i've been using them for the last couple of months together with you guys this is the liquidation heat map here will be a lot of liquidations the moment the bitcoin price visits the 71 to 72k level a lot of liquidations will happen so normally the price will visit that like there was a lot of liquidations over here we did visit that now the liquidations are gone there is not too much to liquidate anymore now we should be going here that is how the market moves between 60 and 70k and keeps liquidating people that use too much leverage in their trades if you want to trade use bybit the link is down below but i will get back to that later in this video but if you want to trade with or without leverage use bybit it is the best exchange out there and in my honest opinion we are gonna hunt for these levels again then we have this beautiful chart where we can see of course the halving lines these red lines these are the halvings the second halving 2016 2020 the third halving over here and now the fourth halving in 2024. now the green line is a year before it, the blue line is a year after the halving. Now, the thing that we can see on this one is here we didn't have a dip after the halving, we had a dip before the halving. We came to a top and we went down. Here we had a dip during or after the halving. Here also a dip after the halving. Here we have now a dip before the halving. We also made an all-time high before the halving. Normally we make an all-time high after the halving. The first time there was no dip. The second time there was a 40% dip. Then there was a 20% dip. This time we had a 16% dip. Maybe that was the after halving dip that now happened before the halving because we also created an all-time high before the halving. But it's a beautiful chart that shows you, yes, there was a dip, but even if you bought before the dip, you would have made a shitload of profit a year after. Yes, there was a dip, but even if you bought before the dip, you would have been in a shitload of profit a year after. That is how you zoom out. A year after the halving, April 2025, you will be looking back at this period like what an idiot I was. I was thinking to buy the dip, I didn't buy the dip, I was stressing about a few K that we dropped in Bitcoin, I sold my Bitcoin because of that drop, and a year after, we will be at a price that you will be regretting that you're doubting to buy now or doubting to sell now. My honest opinion, you should be buying the dip, because in a year after the halving, we will be much higher. Every time and again and again, here we were much higher a year later, here we were much higher a year later, here we were much higher a year later, here we will be much higher a year later. Buy these dips. When it comes to mining, we know that mining happens through mining pools. Ant pool is one of the biggest pools with 27.11% market share. Foundry USA pool is a huge one. There's a lot of mining being done in the United States, 32%. Now there is F2 pool, 12% almost, via BTC, 12%. And a lot of small pools that you can also join if you are a miner. Then you're not mining as a single person, but you're mining as a pool and you share in the revenue of these pools. The thing that I want to talk about is that the cost of these Bitcoin miners that they are making to mine Bitcoin should be less than the Bitcoin price because else they don't make profits. So if they would pay 80k to mine a Bitcoin and the Bitcoin price is 50k, then there is no use case to mine Bitcoins because they would have too much cost to have not enough revenue. It costs 80k and you can sell it for 50k that is making loss. So what needs to happen at the moment is the Bitcoin price needs to double for those Bitcoin miners to still be profitable. Because from the 20th, within three days, they won't be able 
to mine 900 bitcoins collectively a day, but only 450 bitcoins a day, which means these miners are only mining 50% of the amount of bitcoins that they were mining before. And those 50% of the bitcoins of what they were mining before needs to make as much as profit as that 100% of bitcoins did. Because the fixed costs of their uh, buildings, employees, electricity, everything else, that will just continue running. So they will have the same cost, but they will earn less bitcoins. So the Bitcoin price needs to double for them to still break even or make profit. And that is what you can clearly see on this chart over here, the household electricity cost to mine one BTC. We can see that it will cost you almost 50K at the moment to mine in the United States. Canada, 33K for one Bitcoin. This will double, in my honest opinion, if you calculate it like that, now from the halving. So it will be only almost 100k, almost 60k to mine a Bitcoin. Then that Bitcoin price should be higher than that for them to be profitable. So you can see that there's a lot of countries that are cheaper mining. Of course, here in Nigeria, only 7.7k. Egypt, but that's like illegal, 7k. Australia, that's 184k. New Zealand, 50k. Zambia, 8k. So you can see on this chart how much it would cost to mine one Bitcoin, but that chart will change very soon in a couple of days. In a couple of days, um, you will see they will be able to mine 50% of those Bitcoins. So to still break even, uh, they will need to do or mine the double amount or the Bitcoin price needs to double in price. And I think the Bitcoin price will be doubling in price. Then the last chart for today, guys, uh, the Bitcoin market cycle, <clears throat> the red dots is bull market. We are now in the second red dot on this plan B model. Uh, the second dot is not relevant yet. Do you see any of these bull markets, any of them, the first one or the second one or the third one, this one, the fourth one, or now this one? Do you see any of them with only two red dots? No, the answer is no. We can see a shitload of red dots. That means a shitload of months going higher and higher and higher. A shitload of months going higher and higher and higher. A shitload of months going higher and higher and higher. When should you sell? Of course, the perfect top would be the last red dot. The second perfect moment is when the first yellow dot appears. Because you will be able to buy back here at these green dots. And at these green dots, that's the bear market bottom. That's where it's green. That's a beautiful moment to buy. But we will see a lot of red dots now in the next 12 to 18 months. Amazing moments for Bitcoin. Don't doubt, zoom out, buy this dip. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, short term, of course, every time again, and again, and again, and again, it's volatile. But we did bounce at that massive support level of 61K and we are at 64K now. And we can see on that heat map of the liquidations, that that heat liquidation map is showing us that at 72K, a lot of people again will be liquidated. So it's logical for the Bitcoin price to move in that direction to liquidate again a huge part of the market. There need to be liquidations to get this new liquidity into the market. You know, the money needs to be refreshed every time again and again. And then again, Bitcoin can make that move to the next stop. Of course, we see that every time after the halving, we had an after halving dip, but this time we had an ultimate high before the halving so maybe now we also had a pre-halving dip so not after the halving but before the halving it was a nice 16 to 17 percent dip before the halving and maybe that was the last dip you could have bought around 61k nobody knows but i would buy all these dips dollar cost average into bitcoin around these dips and you will dollar cost average out of bitcoin around the top The trading tip for today, guys, is join Bybit. I've been repeatedly repeating, repeated, repeatedly, repeating, <laughs> whatever how you say it, but Bybit is my favorite exchange. And why? Because Bybit has an amazing team. I've been to their head office many times. I know their CEO. I know their whole team. They are real Bitcoin anarchists that really believe in Bitcoin. And Bybit is doing whatever they can 
to keep people trading on Bybit. Even in the Netherlands, you're still able to use Bybit. You're not able to use the high-risk stuff over there, but most of you don't even use it. If you just want to buy some Dogecoin or any other altcoin chain link, you can just keep doing that on Bybit, guys. You can even still use all the earning protocols and the saving for everything and the Bybit debit card, all still usable for Dutch people. For the rest of the world, of course, Bybit is fully usable. Bybit has a side up bonus at the moment up to 30,000 US dollar. And the best thing that Bybit has going on at the moment is the Trader 2024 event. You can win up to 4 million USDT if you sign up to Bybit now. It's amazing. It's a beautiful competition that you can just join by buying some spot or doing some leverage trades. Yes, it's a Dutch person also. Leverage up to 10, still possible. And you can just join that competition and win up to 4 million US dollar. And not only a prize of 4 million US dollar, you can even win an invite to the end of the year gala. That gala that I was with Joe Lee last year. Do you still remember that beautiful gala, beautiful parties, beautiful race? That gala, you can win an entry ticket to that gala if you join Bybit now with the link down below. So that was not a trading tip today. It was shilling Bybit hardcore. <laughs> And why? Because I want you guys all to join Bybit. I just love this exchange. I love the liquidity. I love the safety. I love the transparency that we can see where their capital is at, at which wallet, completely transparent. So Bybit for me is the number one. And of course, I love that they sponsor Max Verstappen, my Formula One hero. Bybit is for me the best exchange out there, guys. So sign up to Bybit with the link down below. If you don't want to sign up to a centralized exchange, then use Apex Pro. It is the only DEX with a beautiful order book model that has a shitload of liquidity, that has a shitload of pairs, that is even giving you also APIs when you stake tokens, etc. Apex Pro is the best decentralized exchange out there. You don't need to send your crypto there. You just connect your MetaMask or your Ledger to Apex Pro and you start to trade from your own wallet. You can't get safer than that. There's the most decentralized ways of trading. So even if Apex would stop, you would still have control on your own wallet and still have all your funds. So yes, if you want to trade decentralized, use the link to Apex Pro. There is a special bonus for you there now as well. The travel tip for today, guys. If you want to visit beautiful towns, traditional towns, big towns that have a huge amount of Bitcoin adoption, I would travel to one of these three towns at the moment. So first, you could travel to Ljubljana in Slovenia. Beautiful city, hardcore Bitcoin adoption over there, more than 400 stores, I think, accepting Bitcoin, direct payments. Even in the supermarket, I was able to pay there with Bitcoin. If you want a little bit more traditional town, a little bit more classic, then you go to Rovereto in Italy. Rovereto in Italy is an amazing town, not as windy as over here, and there is a huge amount of Bitcoin adoption. They call it even Bitcoin Valley over there, and there's like 40 stores accepting Bitcoin. Restaurants, you can even pay for your driving lessons with Bitcoin, you can buy a motor with Bitcoin, you can buy your cheese, your groceries, a lot of stuff with Bitcoin in Rovereto, Italy. So those two towns are amazing. And the third option that you should visit at the moment is Boracay, the Philippines. Boracay, the Philippines, amazing island, beautiful white beaches, beautiful blue sea, beautiful palm trees, and they have a huge amount of Bitcoin adoption over there. Hotels, bars, restaurants, groceries, events, everything you can pay with Bitcoin. There is a huge community over there growing tremendously and trying to educate more and more people to accept Bitcoin, and they are succeeding. I think there are over 200 places now that you can pay with Bitcoin on a beautiful small tropical island, Boracay. Of course, El Salvador is fourth on the list, if you ask me you could go there as well and I would also of course always visit Switzerland for example to see how you can buy bitcoins there at the train station there is many more countries Portugal Spain you can buy cars houses everything there's a lot of countries already that I can now name to you but if I'm uh, if you ask me which one which ones were the first and which one made the biggest impression on me because I visited them already seven 2017 18 19 then still Ljubljana Slovenia Massive adoption, Rovereto, Italy, massive adoption, Boracay, Philippines, massive adoption. Let's meet each other on Boracay. Blue seas, blue skies, a little bit more warm, not too windy, and a beautiful bright sun. 
answering the question of one of the followers. The question was, um, or the remark was, Didi, um, don't you think that most people won't understand self-custody and that most people want to use centralized entities or exchanges or banks, for example, to store their Bitcoins? And what do you think that it will do to mass adoption of Bitcoin? I think it's a very good question and it's a very beautiful subject I talked about in a podcast a couple of days ago. It will still need to go live. But mass adoption, in my honest opinion, can only happen when people, in a simple way, are able to use Bitcoin. So, most people are very lazy, so it should be an app or something. So, mostly, uh, it should be a banking app. You know, the banking app that they already use, ah, then it shows a button, oh, you can buy Bitcoin, and then they would easily buy Bitcoin in their banking app. Okay, that's possible. And Revolut, it apparently is already possible to buy Bitcoins with a push of a button. So, I think more and more banking apps will integrate Bitcoin and the, the possibility for their clients to buy Bitcoin at their bank. And again, in my honest opinion, that is not Bitcoin, because when you buy Bitcoin, at your bank so then the bank is your custodial service it doesn't allow you to send your bitcoins externally then it is not your bitcoins it is only your bitcoins when you are able to use them whenever you want to send them to whoever you want and to sell them to whoever you want if you hold your bitcoins at the bank and you can only sell them back to the bank that is not a bitcoin you should be able to sell the bank to anyone in the world peer to peer you should be able to send it to anyone in the world you should be able to use it as much as you want 24 7. So I would never buy at these banks, I would never use a custodial service, but I do understand that that is one step that will bring adoption to Bitcoin because most people don't want to educate themselves on how to really use Bitcoins. So the answer to the question is, yes, it will help the adoption, but my opinion, it is not the right way for adoption. You should all buy Bitcoins and send them to your own custodial hardware wallet, for example, or software wallet on your telephone or computer, but not store them at a centralized entity because they can again freeze them or hold you from using them in the way that you should be using Bitcoin, sending it wherever you want, whenever you want, all over the world. So that is the answer to the question. Uh, adoption will come probably in a centralized way, uh, preferably in a decentralized way. The news for today is a kind of strange but also special news because you know that I'm all the all-in guy. You know that I sold my house, my companies, everything. Yeah? Mainly the house was a thing that people said, <laughs> selling your house to Bitcoins, what are you doing? Is it even possible? Now, there is this new project being built on Avalanche. This project raised around like $10 million, if I think, in the first round. The name is Homium, and this Homium is doing a real cool thing. I know I'm not being paid for this. I found this article on Cointelegraph, and I just want to share it because I'm the guy that sold his house of Bitcoin and this would be a solution for all those people that don't want to sell their house for Bitcoin but still want to use the equity of that house to buy Bitcoin. So this Homium project now introduces a way for homeowners to borrow against their home equity. So the value that is in your house you can use that now to borrow against that and use that loan that you get, that money that you get to buy something else or invest in Bitcoin. So you don't need to sell your house anymore. You're gonna sell the future profit that your house is gonna make, the equity in your house, to this project that will tokenize it and you will be able to get a loan because of that, borrow money and use that money for something else. But whenever the house will increase in value, they will also take a cut of the profit of that increase of the value of your house. I think it is something like that. I, di I didn't do a deep dive yet. I just read the news this morning. And I found it really interesting that people now don't need to sell their house anymore, but can use, for example, the overvalue in that house as a collateral to loan dollars or USDT to be able to buy, for example, Bitcoin. So you can still live in the house while you're not increasing your monthly costs. Your mortgage is not going up because you're loaning against the equity that your house has. So you're not paying more each month. You do get money that you are able to buy Bitcoin with. So you're able, for example, to use that overvalue of the equity of the house to borrow money without having to increase your mortgage. So your monthly cost will stay the same. You're just borrowing or using that overvalue, for example, as a collateral. You can borrow that money, stay in the house, 
not pay more every month and still buy Bitcoin. I think it's a really cool solution. I'm gonna keep an eye on this project. Again, I'm not being paid to shill the project. I saw the news and I really thought, hey, this is really cool. This is something that we need to sell the house for. Now in the future, maybe people don't need to sell the house. They can just use the equity in their house to borrow against it and use that money to buy Bitcoins while their monthly cost will stay the same. How cool is that? I will keep an eye on it and I will still need to do a deep dive into it, but let me know what you think about that concept. Would you do this? Would you use the overvalued equity in your house to borrow against it, to be able to buy Bitcoins while you're still living in your house without the increase of your monthly cost? The wind is really, really, really hard now, guys. Sorry for that. And let's jump into the next part. The last part of the video, guys, is the inspirational part. And the inspirational part today is to do with the beautiful waves that we see over there. Um, feelings are kind of the same as the waves. We can't stop them from coming. Waves will come, feelings will come, but we can choose which ones to surf. So if there is a beautiful wave that you like, you will take that to surf it because that's a beautiful wave. That's the same with feelings. There's a shitload of feelings, a shitload of thoughts coming into your mind every day. But you can choose which feelings to focus on or which feelings to surf on, to flow with. It's very important that you understand that you are a third person in your brain that is observing those two devil and angels discussing with each other. You are the observer. You are not those two persons with different feelings. You should be leaning back into your chair and looking at those two people, every choice, everything that you, you know, run into into the day, you are like, ah, this is this, oh no, this is this, oh no, this is this. You are observing it. You're not that, you're not this. You're the third person that is observing it and then chooses which way to follow, which wave to serve, which feeling or which solution to choose. Every time when you run into something during the day, think about that. Don't go into that emotional of hate or love or anger or fear. Observe it. Sit back, look at those two people. Just imagine being in this beautiful gaming chair, observing those two people discussing and you choosing which one to follow. And then you will understand that you are not one of those voices in your head, but you are the single one that chooses which one to follow. And I know that a lot of you now will say, oh my God, that is too floaty, that's too floaty. But if you are honest to yourself, you need to agree that this always happens. If you go and you walk this boulevard and you are choosing one of the restaurants, one voice is saying, ah, that restaurant could be good. And the other one is saying, nah, maybe the next one will be better. Uh, that is both not you. That's your brain puppets or whatever you call them um, discussing with each other. You are the one observing that. You should be observing that. You should be seeing yourself as the one that is observing those two voices and then makes a choice. That is how you take control in your life. If you're driving a car on a one-way street and there's a car in front of you, that car is like really, really driving slowly, two voices. One voice will say, honk, 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 yell at him. The other voice will say, hey man, just turn on the music and enjoy the beautiful scenery. You are the one that chooses which one to follow. Are you going to be the stressful one? Ah, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> or are you going to be the one, okay, let's turn on Bob Marley, let's enjoy the scenery, let's just enjoy the slow drive now for once and uh, next time we'll go faster. You choose. But those two voices will always be discussing. You need to lean back and observe those two voices and choose which one to follow. That is the inspirational life lesson for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. What do you think about the charts, about the tips and everything else? Sorry for the wind. Hopefully tomorrow is better. I really want to walk the beach and see the beautiful booties on this beach, if that's even possible. Maybe even some boobs. Oh shit, what did I say? Is YouTube now gonna cancel me? No, Bitcoin, beach, and boobies just belong to each other. It's a beautiful word with a B. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. I'm gonna enjoy this uh, fresh wind now to do some sports on the boulevard. Bam.